Do you want to document your Camino experience but don't know what to buy or where to start? I've tried a number of different setups while walking our last three Caminos and I've finally found the one that I believe is the easiest to use, the lightest, and produces the best quality. And let me start by saying, in my opinion, the answer is not heavy camera gear that's expensive. It's a streamlined and easy to use setup that is simple enough for anyone, even if you're just starting out for the first time on the whole worldwide of videoing on YouTube, or as YouTubers call it, vlogging. Sue from Sisters to Santiago here to share with you about my setup using only an iPhone and a few accessories. Before I jump into my review and recommendations, I wanna share something with all of you. One thing you might not know about me is I'm actually a professional wedding and portrait photographer, but what I'm not is a videographer. So when I decided to document our Camino experience with video instead of still photography, I was entering some uncharted territory. Having a solid knowledge base of composition and storytelling has definitely helped, but the world of still photography and videography are very different animals. I want to stress again that the setup I'm going to share with you today is perfect for a novice or beginner. You do not need to be a professional. Okay, let's dig into this. In my opinion, it comes down to seven key factors that are the most important when choosing the gear you will use to vlog your communal experience. Number one, must provide good picture quality. Number two, must provide good sound quality even in windy conditions. Number three, must be discreet. Nothing so large that it's going to attract attention. Number four, must be lightweight. Number five, must be easy to use. Number six, must be affordable. And number seven, must be straightforward so your post-processing and editing is simple. For all three of our past Caminos, my main camera has been my iPhone 11 Pro, but I just upgraded to the iPhone 15 Pro, which I'll be taking on our fourth Camino, the way of St. Francis, which we'll be leaving for in just a few days. I personally think the quality of the current smartphones is really good, and although I don't think it's good enough to capture a wedding with, it is for vlogging your Camino experience. For the Camino Portuguese, I brought along a second device, the Insta360 camera with its invisible selfie stick. I've watched a number of vlogs from other pilgrims who've used them and loved the look of it. It was like having a drone following you without actually having a drone. In reality though, I personally found having two different filming devices was just more than I wanted to deal with. Plus it added more weight actually 9.65 ounces, so I won't be taking it on any future Caminos with us. If you decide that a smartphone will be your recording device of choice, make sure you get a good protective case. When I bought my new iPhone 15 Pro, I decided to actually go with a MagSafe cover. MagSafe covers have dual purposes. Not only do they protect your phone, but they also have a magnet on the back that comes in handy when using a selfie stick, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later in the video. Make sure you have enough space available on your phone. Videos take a lot of memory and you don't want to get caught on the trail with an insufficient memory notice. To ensure this doesn't happen to you, download all or at least most of the photos and videos that you currently have on your phone to an external drive or to your computer, then delete them off your phone. Also make sure you don't have any files or documents saved on your phone that will take up valuable memory. Smartphones have come a long way in picture quality but are still lagging in the audio department. Not sure if you believe me? Well, let's do a test. I just switched over to the built-in mic on my phone. How does it sound? Do you like it? Is it okay? Maybe in an ideal environment like being indoors, but when you're outside, you can start hearing all the outside noises. You can hear the plane probably, and when the wind picks up, you'll probably hear that. Unfortunately, the phone's built-in mic picks up ambient noise from everything, traffic, wind, and really, in my opinion, degrades the quality of the recording. Audio is so important to your video. You can have the most beautiful video, but if the voice recording is drowned out by wind or other ambient noise, it can be really annoying for viewers to watch. 
This is why I recommend using an external mic. After a ton of research and testing several different mics, I narrowed it down to three wireless mic finalists that I can use with my smartphone. The top three candidates were the DJI mic, the Rode Video Mic Me, and the Hollyland Mark or Hollyland Lark M2 mic. I compared each of these um, based on eight criteria. Number one, battery life and recording time must be sufficient. We don't want to run out of battery while we're still on the trail. Number two, sound quality must provide a noise canceling feature so that ambient noise like the wind and the traffic won't overtake your voice. Number three, must be discreet. You can't have something so large it's going to be like drawing everyone's attention. And number four, must work with a protective case on your smartphone. Number five, must be lightweight. Number six, must be easy to use. I don't personally want a lot of buttons to deal with. Number seven, must be affordable. And number eight, must be able to be used by two people as it's my sister and I that are walking. And this one is not gonna be probably as important to all of you, but it is for us. My wireless mic of choice is the Hollyland Lark M2. And that is actually what I'm using right now. All three options provided really good sound quality, even in a noisy environment with wind, but the Hollyland won out for the following reasons. The transmitter are these small little buttons. Here, let me get one without the dead cat. These tiny little buttons, and they're super lightweight and discreet. And they provide um, three different ways to wear them. You can use the magnet, which I have here, they also come with a little clip if you want to clip it on something. And they also have these necklaces that you can attach. It's pretty nice. And the setup is super simple. And the adjustments are very simple to use as well. Um, the furry windshield, which is known as a dead cat, is also pretty small and doesn't attract too much attention. The sound quality is great even when you are far away from your phone. Don't believe me? So the sound quality? It's pretty good, even from this distance. So what the wonderful thing is when Amory's, say, further down the trail than I am, then she can be talking and it can still pick up her voice. Number seven, you don't need to disconnect the receiver from the phone to hear the playback. And this was an issue with one of the other units, and it was really annoying. Um, number eight, the battery life is excellent with up to 10 hours of running time for the transmitter. And number nine, the charging case can be charged up to 40 hours and it's less than an hour and a half to charge the transmitters in the case. And number 10, they are about half the price as their runner up wireless mic. I've tried several different selfie sticks over the years and frankly just wasn't happy with them. And after walking three Caminos and trying many different ones, I quickly found out what works and what doesn't. One of the things that drove me nuts about selfie sticks is this clamp to put your phone on. It was always such a pain in the neck to put this on. Got rid of that. I finally found the one, the one that I absolutely love. And this is it. It's the Telesyn Magnetic Selfie Stick. So basically, first of all, a couple things. It extends to 27 inches. And it also then collapses down very small. And it only weighs 6.81 ounces. And it has a built-in tripod. And it also has a wireless Bluetooth remote. But what really sold me on this was how it attaches to the phone. So after that old clamping system, all you need now is a magnetic MagSafe case for your phone and it just connects like that. I'd show you, but my phone is being used to tape us right now. But basically it just attaches and you can either video horizontally or turn it and video vertically. And it's amazing and it's super, super easy. I will never use anything else but this selfie stick. Now that we've compiled the vlogging kit, the next question to ask is how do you carry the system on the trail so you have quick access to it without being annoyed and having to pull it out of your pocket all the time? 
I'm happy to share that I found what I think is the perfect system and super lightweight. And it's actually not even made for this purpose. It's made to hang bottles from, and it's this buckle by U brand right here. So what I do is I just take the end, put it in. My phone is always going to be attached and it sits right there. And when I want to walk, it's right there. It's not in my way. And when I want to tape, I just take it out and here I am. So it's super, super easy. I've actually used this system on all of our Caminos. Well, except for the first one. Um, and I'm just really happy with it. Taking lots of videos not only eats up your phone's memory, but it depletes your battery life. So you need to bring an external power bank with you. At least this is the case for me because I take a ton of video while we're on the Camino and we're typically walking for about six to seven hours a day. On our previous Caminos, I brought 5,000 milliamp portable charger. And unfortunately on our last Camino, it actually ran out of juice one day before we finished walking, which was a real bummer. So I decided to upgrade to 10,000 milliamps. Not only do I use my phone for videos, but I also like to listen to books on tape as well. And between the two of those, it can really run down your battery. Additionally, my sister doesn't bring a portable charger, so having the extra power would really come in handy for her. After lots of research, I settled on a lightweight and ultra thin, thin power bank by Nightcore. It weighs um, a bit more than my previous one, but it doubles my charging ability, and that was well worth a little extra weight for me. If you don't listen to books on tape and music while you're on the trail, you may only need the 5,000 milliamp charger, so that could save you some weight. Now that I've put together my ideal vlogging kit, let's see what it weighs. So all in, the total is only 35 ounces or 2.2 pounds. Now my system might not be the lightest option out there, but I have prioritized quality, price, and ease of use in addition to weight. I don't think it's that bad for having the high quality setup like this, but only you can make the decision if it's worth it for you. In order to take the best videos possible on your iPhone, a few changes need to be made to the default settings. So first of all, if you go into camera, settings, then scroll down to composition and put the grid and level on. Next, go to preserve settings and you want that to be camera mode on. The next one is format and that should be under most compatible. So for the recording video section, I put mine at 1080 at 60 frames per second. In an ideal world, I would do 40K at 60 frames per second, which is a lot better, but that eats up a ton of memory on your phone. And when you're on the trail, you just don't have the luxury of downloading your footage to an external hard drive. Under the section called record video, you wanna have enhanced stabilization on, and you want your lock, lock white balance on. These settings I will have in the description below, so don't worry about taking notes on them right now. Now that you have all of your gear and you're ready to hit the Camino, you might be thinking, well, how do I actually video my footage so it comes out looking good? Well, as a professional photographer, I can share a few tips that might help. The first one is pan slowly. And what I mean by pan, it's when you do this, or when you do this with your camera. So when, you, when I say pan slowly, I mean slowly, much more than you think. So when you pan, you wanna pan like that slow, real, real slow. Keep your video segments short. I typically take 10 to 20 second segments and then I cut those down to about three second snippets for the final video. Capture your subject from a different perspective and a different angle that people are just are not accustomed to seeing. For example, instead of taking a video of a flower from standing up looking down on it, actually get down to the eye level of the flower and take the video from there. You're gonna be working on your legs a little, but it'll give you a really interesting view for your, um, for your um, audience. And this is why the imagery from the 360, Insta360 camera and the drones are so interesting to us because they're taken from an, um, an angle that we're just not used to seeing the world at. Video a lot 
I mean a lot. You don't need to use it all for your final vlog, but having to, um, the ability to take sections and snippets from the different videos to tell your story about a place or a moment that happened is going to make your life a lot easier. Engage with the camera. We as humans hate being in front of the camera, but you will want to try really hard to overcome this fear. You want your audience to engage in you, not just the things you're, you're seeing. Your personal feelings and experiences should be part of your vlog. Think about this as a storytelling experience. I promise it will get easier over time. Just ask my sister. She absolutely hated talking on camera, but she doesn't mind it at all and she's great now. One last thing to keep in mind, the camera on the back of the iPhone is much better than the one on the front of the iPhone. But I realize that when you're trying to video yourself using the back of the camera, um, the back of the iPhone camera is gonna be hard. So use the 0.5 lens and you'll see that on the bottom there. Just click on that 0.5 lens and that's not only gonna be able to get you, but your environment in the shot and it'll be much easier. Before I talk about the last segment of this video, which is post-processing and editing, I wanted to say that if you're enjoying this topic, please like and subscribe, um, and please hit that notification bell because we will be hitting the Camino soon and we will be doing tons of videos. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna talk about post-processing editing workflow. For my professional photography business, I use Adobe products to edit my imagery, but for my YouTube videos, I wanted a simpler solution that would be easy, inexpensive, and allow me to edit on the go. And what I found was a free app called CapCut. Actually, it was my nephew that introduced me to CapCut. CapCut is a free video editing app that lets users quickly turn their smartphone videos into pro quality content. It's super user friendly and you don't have to be an expert to figure it out. Of course, there is a small little lear learning curve, but hey, everything has a little learning curve. And if there's um, also a ton of YouTube videos out there, they can help you get started. CapCut provides a number of features, including cutting, music integration, text, and tons of others. And the beauty of this software, besides being free, is that you can do mobile editing on your smartphone. You also have the ability to edit on the computer if that is easier for you. CapCut does have a pro level that costs money, but personally, I think their free version is just fine. I hope you enjoyed my vlog on vlogging and if you are interested in checking out the gear I recommend I've included a list of that in the description below as well as where I purchased it. If you have a setup that you love please share that in the comments below. Um, there's always room for improving on my system. Sue from Sisters to Santiago signing off before I lose my voice in Buen Camino Pilgrims.